video, we're going to have a look at how to create a basement slab uh, for the purposes of this project that we're working on. But uh, more than anything, we're going to be looking at how the slab tool works and also understanding how uh, one of the other tools works that's called solid element operation in order to be able to cut our slab into the site in a relationship that can be adjusted as we need it. So we're up on basement story. We're going to right click on the terrain earth story, say show as trace reference. So we're going to be able to see it underneath and then we can start our work. Now again, the slab layer is turned off. So when I start clicking, I'm going to have to say show layer. So the, obviously the layer combination that we're working in isn't very good at the moment. It's probably because I left it on something like RCP, which probably wasn't very smart. So how do we do this? We could just start drawing a slab. I tend to not do that uh, because I like to set myself up a bit first. So when we're manually drafting or hand drafting, we would be using construction lines or grid lines or reference line. So that's how I'm going to work in this case. I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to draw a line, and now I'm just going to move it. Now I could have used the offset line tool, I could still use the offset line tool, but I don't really need to. Now what am I trying to do? I'm trying to create uh, boundary offsets. So we could use a different type of line to do that if we really wanted to. I'm going to bring this one in, now I'm going to move the line away, and I'm going to hold shift in this case and that's going to bring it into a set distance. How big do I want that to be? This is a, a, a road. Now, I'm doing something wrong, aren't I? Because I'm doing this to the edge of my mesh, not the edge of the site. So what I really should be doing is overlaying my site. And if I have an idea of which reference, which orientation I want to do, I should really be adjusting all of this information. Now. Which way is north? North is directly up the page at the moment. So let's draw a line. North is this way. That's often how surveys are done, facing up for north. But we don't generally draw with north directly up the page if that's going to mean our buildings are on an angle. Now I want my buildings to align with this side or rear boundary. So I'm going to rotate my drawing all of my drawing work to fit that angle. Now I could rotate each story, each element, that but that would be silly. The way that I'm going to do it is to draw a marquee around the whole thing. Big marquee, doesn't matter if it's too big. And I'm going to make sure that marquee is a solid marquee or a thick marquee. Because it's thick, it'll mean that it will affect every story. Now generally, we'll do this when we're using the stretch tool. This is the most common function for this, but of course we could do this for drag or rotate, which is what we're going to do. So if we go on each story, we're going to see this is going to change my AHD, my terrain, my basement, and my ground story all together. And again, for AutoCAD users, that's why it's really, really important when you start working in ArchiCAD that we put everything on stories and we keep it in place. We don't spread or duplicate information across the page because then it just makes life harder for us later. Now it doesn't matter which story I'm on when I do this function. Now that I've got this thick marquee, I'm going to go edit or right click, move, rotate. Of course I've got my little move commands here as well. Doesn't matter where I do this, I could use a few different methods. I'm going to choose the top left corner, choose the top right hand corner of the site, and then I'm going to rotate it up until I get to horizontal. And if I'm not quite sure, I'm going to hold shift and that's going to define me along that horizontal line. So that's flipped everything. Double click to get rid of the marquee. Go down one story. We'll see that north has now moved because we've redefined our orientation. What do I need to do now? I now can start doing what I was doing before using my fill. Now let's do it more clever this time. Now because I have a fill which is my site, I've already defined that site, rather than drawing a single line for a boundary offset, let's do something more clever. Let's use the polyline tool and this time I'm going to use my offset tool, magic wand, and now it's going to draw for me a boundary offset. Now what is the boundary offset? I don't know. It's inconsistent. What might it be? We could have a boundary offset of one meter, maybe of two meters, of three meters. Now it depends on your design, it depends on the council regulation zoning requirements. We're going to make this a minimum of three meters. 
Now we see that that produced lots of strange lines, but that's okay. Why did it do that? Because of my magic wand settings. Let's go back to design, magic wand settings, deviation from curve. Try that again. We'll just turn off the trace reference for a second, just in case that confuses it as well. Polyline tool. Offset tool. I could do the offset later if I wanted to. Magic wand, bring it in three meters. Now, because I changed the magic wand tool back to the deviations, it now did a full line as one solid line, which is definitely the way that I'd prefer it to work. So that'll normally be the setting that I use. I'll only change it back to uh, length, segment length, when I'm using something like the um, spline tool. Now, do I want it to be three on all sides? Definitely not. So what am I going to do about that? I'm going to have to offset this. Now, it's a bit tricky because it's a polyline. I'm going to split this for now. Split to break this polyline up. And then I'm going to offset this one. How, do, how am I going to offset it? I could do it in a few different ways. I could click it and then use the offset function, offset edge. Now it wouldn't do this very well because it would only be offsetting this particular edge or I could do the offset all edges and then it would offset all of the edges that I have here. So that's my best option at the moment. How far do I want to offset it? This is the um, street side and so I would probably want this to be a minimum of 8 meters. So I'm going to offset an additional 5 meters. Now of course that's going too far. I can potentially trim that to that point. Now it's three meters all the other way around. I'm going to leave that for now. Now this is a main road, so I'm going to make this 12 meters instead of um, three meters. So I need another nine meters. I'm going to split this one again as well, just so they're all separate for now. Same process, offset all edges, click on it, left click, offset all edges, another nine meters. Now, how am I going to do this? I could use my intersect tool, but it doesn't like the intersect tool for a spline. Sorry, a polyline. So I'm going to instead grab that polyline and I'm going to make sure I move back a bit to get the line straight and then extend through so it's using a reference point. And then again, use the trim point or trim tool to trim it back to that point. I'm going to trim both of these. So that's redefining the point. Trim this so it's redefining the point. And once I've finished all of that, of course, I could leave them all as individual polylines or I could redraw it. So let's see how we could redraw it. Let's change the color to red, change the shape to um, this one here, dot dash. And I'm going to magic one now inside of this shape. Why inside? Because by doing it inside, it defined it as one shape instead of choosing all of the individual polylines. Yep, so now I've been talking for a while about doing different things. As it turned out, I'm, I've been doing something else. But now we've got um, our boundary offset, and now we're going to use the slab tool. So slab tool, we're just going to draw the slab at the moment, and then we're going to have a look at what that means. I'm not going to worry too much about its settings, and I'm going to draw this slab all the way using the uh, rotated rectangular method. The full length, we see that that's 74.007, so it's a strange number, uh, but I'll um, rectify that later. And then I'm going to offset this direction to a length of 18 meters, 18000. And this is going to be roughly the shape of my, um, of my basement slab. Now of course I don't want it to be 74007 so I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter. How could I do that? I could do it in a few different ways. I could have done it straight away. What I could do is just R7, zoom a mile in and find it, or I could offset it 7. and that would make it smaller as well. So there's a lot of different ways we can do any one thing. Um, this is our slab. What I'm going to do now for you is add a cover fill. We're going to make that cover fill 25%, background white, foreground uh, blue, just so you can see it. There's my slab. 
sorry, background transparent, not white. There's my slab. What does it mean? It's currently a two-dimensional element. Of course, now we can go right-click, show all in 3D, and we can see that there's a slab that's sitting partially into our mesh. But at the moment, it's cutting into our mesh. Is that what we want to do? It is, but we don't want it to stay like that. What we want to do is to cut out the mesh so we can see the slab We'll do that in the next um, video. We'll use the solid element operation tool. This one has probably gone long enough as it is when we looked at how to create a slab. But before just drawing a slab, we looked at how to set up the size for the slab and we also looked at the rotation tool. Now, is there anything else we might want to change? We could change the thickness of the slab now. It's currently based on a composite. We could change this to a basic shape just to make it simple. Let's make this 200 mil thick. Concrete would be fine, and with its top reference plane at a height of zero to this story. Now, does it matter about these override settings? Not really. It's fine. We could change it all to concrete if it's upsetting you. There we go. Alright, in the next video we'll have a look at how to use the solid element operation tool.